Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Nutrition Diva podcast. I'm Monica Reinagel, and I'm so glad you tuned in today. This week's show was prompted by an email from James, who wrote, Can you review which of the many health benefits attributed to apple cider vinegar have actually been proven scientifically? Would these benefits also apply to other vinegars? And is there any extra benefit to consuming unpasteurized vinegar? You know, every time I think that the apple cider vinegar craze has finally settled down, another magazine article or website or a new product line proves me wrong. Apple cider vinegar does have a few things going for it, but as you might have suspected, its powers have been vastly overhyped in the popular imagination. Let's get the bad news out of the way first. Here are a few things that apple cider vinegar probably won't do for you. Number one, it's not going to magically melt the fat from your body. As I talked about in a podcast from way back in 2009, the acetic acid in vinegar has been shown to boost metabolism and cause you to burn an extra calorie or two. And that's true of any vinegar, by the way, not just apple cider vinegar. But this is another example of the fact that something can be true without being particularly meaningful. The effect of vinegar on your metabolism is so modest that it's really unlikely to result in noticeable weight loss unless it's combined with other strategies, such as eating less. Number two, apple cider vinegar won't purify your blood or eliminate toxins. Unlike the metabolism thing, which at least has some scientific basis, the idea that apple cider vinegar will flush impurities or toxins from your body is just wishful thinking. As I talked about in a previous podcast on detoxification, your liver and your kidneys are extremely effective at eliminating toxins. If you want to help them, the best thing you can do is to give them less to do by reducing your exposure to toxins, such as excessive alcohol, secondhand smoke, volatile fumes, pesticides, and so on. And finally, despite some of the breathless descriptions you might read online, drinking a shot of apple cider vinegar every day doesn't flood your body with massive amounts of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. It's just fermented fruit juice. So much for the bad news. Now, before I get into the things that apple cider vinegar might actually do for you, I do want to tell you about this week's sponsor, Bedphones. If you find earbuds uncomfortable, you should check out the amazing new headphones from Dubs Labs called Bedphones. They are the thinnest headphones on the market, and that makes them great for sleep, travel, meditation, and just about anything else you can think of. And the adjustable memory wire makes for a perfect fit every time. Bedphones also have an inline microphone and a remote, so you could also use them for hands-free phone calls and any other voice-activated features. Now, if you're looking for new wireless headphones, you have to check out their VersaFit product. It's on Kickstarter right now. Just like the Bedphones, the VersaFit headphones are super thin, and they give you more than 10 hours of playback on a single charge. Plus, they're sweat-resistant, and they would fit easily under helmets for biking or other sports. Check out the VersaFit on Kickstarter today. And for a special offer on bedphones, head to dubslabs.com slash nutritiondiva and enter the coupon code nutritiondiva, and you'll get $10 off your purchase. And now, here are three ways that apple cider vinegar could actually benefit you. Number one, it can help modulate your blood sugar. Acetic acid, which again is found in all types of vinegar, can partially block the digestion of starches, meaning that less sugar is absorbed into the bloodstream from carbohydrate foods. Consuming a small amount of vinegar, we're talking one or two tablespoons in a cup of water, before you eat a carbohydrate-rich meal, can somewhat blunt the glycemic impact or the blood sugar spike that are caused by eating carbohydrates. Now, that doesn't mean that carbohydrates will have no calories or have no effect on your blood sugar, just that the impact will be somewhat less. If you take anti-diabetic medications, be sure to check with your doctor, though, before experimenting. Apple cider vinegar also could help relieve your heartburn. Now, apple cider vinegar is an old folk remedy for heartburn, and there's a logical underpinning for this. Most people think that acidic foods are what cause heartburn, but as I explained in a previous episode on reflux, heartburn is not necessarily caused by acidic foods or even by excessive stomach acid. 
Heartburn happens when stomach acid escapes out of the stomach and into the esophagus. Drinking a bit of vinegar diluted in water lowers the pH in the upper stomach. It makes it more acidic. And this can cause the lower esophageal sphincter or the LES to close more tightly. And that helps prevent heartburn by reducing the amount of acid that can leak into the esophagus. Popping antacids, on the other hand, has the opposite effect. It raises the pH in the stomach, which can allow that sphincter to relax and allow more stomach acid to leak out. For an occasional bout of heartburn, this folk remedy is worth a try, especially if you're someone who does not get good results with antacids. However, if you have severe or chronic reflux or any other disorder of the stomach or the esophagus, or if you're taking acid-blocking medications, you should run this one past your doctor first. And finally, apple cider vinegar may contain some beneficial bacteria. All vinegars are created through fermentation, and that means that they contain live microorganisms, providing that they haven't been pasteurized, of course. As we've all been talking about pretty much nonstop for the last couple of years, including probiotic foods, and that would include unpasteurized apple cider vinegar in your diet, can help you maintain a healthy microbiome. So if all of that sounds good to you, let me offer just a couple of tips on how to use apple cider vinegar. You can, of course, use it the way you would use any other vinegar in salad dressings or marinades, but it's also become fashionable to drink it. Now, drinking straight vinegar can erode your tooth enamel and even damage the esophagus, so you always want to dilute vinegar in water before you drink it. A tablespoon or two in 8 ounces, that's 240 milliliters, of water is a pretty good strength. I also suggest consuming no more than two or three of these cocktails per day, as drinking too much vinegar can cause low potassium levels, and we don't want that. If you have comments or questions, you can post them on our website, which is at quickanddirtytips.com, or you can always find me on both Facebook and Twitter. I'm at Nutrition Diva on both platforms. Thanks for listening today. I hope your year is off to a great start. If you're looking for ways to improve your diet and your nutrition this year, please subscribe to the podcast and also check the archives. You can access all 400 and so shows at quickanddirtytips.com. And you might also be interested in my nutrition blog, which is at nutritionovereasy.com. Have a great week and remember to eat something good for me.